As he selects the shims, he sets them aside. To double check this combination, he then measures them together. Next, he removes the snap ring to allow the shims to be put on the shaft over the bearing. With the shims in place, the snap ring is then reinstalled to hold them in place. As before, Snap ring pliers are used to spread the snap ring open, allowing it to be installed. The running clearance of the impeller is then rechecked. This is to ensure that the shims installed provide the desired clearance. The clearance should now be 21 thousandths. Since he knows the desired clearance, he selects the blades that fit into the clearance gap. As before, the workman double checks the thickness of the feeler gauge for accuracy with a micrometer. With the running clearance of the impeller set, the workman is now ready to put on the bearing cover. The thickness of the cover gasket is determined by measuring the thickness of the shims and snap ring. Then an additional 50% is added. This is to allow for compression of the gasket material. To select the proper gasket, the workman must measure the gasket thickness. Several thicknesses are supplied, and it may be necessary to put in more than one gasket. When the workman has selected the necessary gasket, he places it into the bearing cover. He also removes the cap screws from the plastic bag so they're ready when he needs them. Then the bearing cover is placed back on the pump. When you do this, take care not to damage the oil seal that's in the bearing cover. He seats the cover squarely on the housing. With the cover in place, the cap screws are put in and evenly tightened. Before the pump is installed, it has to be packed. The seal cage is also installed during the packing process. Finally, the gland follower is installed. The pump is now ready for installation. However, there is one important note of caution. Check the rotation of the motor that is going to be used to drive the pump. Make sure it rotates in the direction indicated on the bearing cover. If you install the pump with the motor rotation in the wrong direction, the impeller would be threaded off the shaft, possibly damaging the pump. Right now, I think we're at a good point to stop the tape so you can review what we've covered so far with your instructor. In the previous segment, when the pump was reassembled, standard packing was used. In this segment, I'd like to discuss the installation of a mechanical seal. 
Many pumps can be fitted with either standard packing or a mechanical seal. The type of sealing arrangement depends upon what the pump is going to be used for. So let's join the workman now as he installs a mechanical seal. As always, before doing any work, the workman checks the manufacturer's instructions. The first thing he's going to do is mark the shaft. So he holds a scribe against the shaft at the top of the packing gland. As the shaft is rotated, the scribe makes a mark. This mark will be used as a reference point for the seal installation. Next, he removes the cap screws. After the cap screws are loosened and removed, the end plate will be ready for removal. He takes care when removing the end plate. If it's dropped or banged on the shaft, it could damage the shaft. Next, the workman assembles the stationary unit. He installs the bottom gasket, then the stationary seal. He's careful not to touch the seal surface. It must be kept extremely clean to seal properly. Finally, the second gasket is installed. Again, he's careful not to touch the seal surface. Next, he places a drop of oil on the seal surface. The oil is spread around with a clean tissue. He then slides the follower flange and stationary unit onto the shaft with the stationary seal facing out. Now the rotating element is ready to be installed on the shaft. The workman aligns the end of the rotating element with the scribe mark. Then he tightens the set screws which hold the seal on.